Good morning and welcome everyone to this virtual one day event on optimal vaccination strategies. So my name is Jane Leakes and I manage the Newton Gateway to Mathematics, which is the impact initiative of the Isaac Newton Institute for Mathematical Sciences. So very, very quick welcome from me before I hand over to my colleagues, Kira Dangerfield and uh, Sam Moore, who are going to do um, some more introductions before we kick off with our first talk. So as I'm sure you're all aware, the Newton Gateway has a key role to play in the ramp continuity network. So obviously that's rapid assistance in modeling the pandemic, which is a UK RI funded project. And we're helping to deliver a series of meetings, workshops and virtual study groups that react to key priority areas in the UK's response to the current pandemic. And indeed this project is guided by links with the Juniper uh, program um, and Dr. Uh, Kira Dangerfield is going to tell you a little bit more about that and also links into the Isaac Newton Institute program on infectious disease dynamics which as you will know ran virtually um, last year. So we're very grateful to our academic organiser Dr. Sam Moore of the University of Warwick um, to be honest without whom this event series uh, wouldn't be possible but obviously we've, we've been able to work closely with Kira as well, who's given us some great scientific advice. And just very briefly, I'd like to thank our two chairs for sessions one and session two for very kindly stepping in to help support us. So that's Ed Hill and Emily Nixon. Thank you very much both. Very quickly, a little bit of Zoom housekeeping. I'm sure you're all completely Zoom skilled up by now, but just to say, uh, this is going to be Zoom uh, webinar. So there'll be a few minutes for questions at the end of each talk. And our, our speakers do know that they need to allow a, a few minutes for that within their, their timing slot. Um, please either post your questions in the Q&A box or chat or raise your hand. There will be a discussion session at the end of the afternoon to include uh, those speakers who can stay. Um, so if you've got any further questions or questions more generally, please do stay on for that. Um, and as I said, as this is a Zoom webinar, webinar, your camera and microphone will be turned off unless you raise your hand if you wish to speak. This session is being recorded, but only speakers and organisers are seen. Q&A and discussion sessions will be recorded, but won't be posted online. And any Zoom related issues, please either post in chat or email Claire Bonner. You'll have Claire's email address because obviously she sent you all the joining uh, instructions. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to Dr. Kira Dangerfield, who's just going to say a few words about Juniper. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Jane. Um, I've just got a quick uh, slide, um, which I'll hopefully everyone can see. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Jane, for the introduction. Um, so uh, I am the Senior Scientific Programme Manager for the Juniper Consortium. So that stands for Joint Universities Pandemic and Epidemiological Research. Um, so it's a, a group of um, seven uh, modelling groups from seven different universities. So there's Warwick, Cambridge, Bristol, Manchester, Lancaster, Exeter and Oxford um, and the consortium is uh, jointly led by um, Professor Julia Gogg and Professor Matt Keeling. So um, the consortium is currently providing uh, modelling support um, across the UK uh, regarding uh, COVID-19 um, uh, to various different um, government advice bodies, um, in particular most of the co-investigators who you can see pictured here um, sit on SPY-M. Uh, so recent outputs have included um, in the, over the summer, a lot of the uh, consortium's work showed the early rise in the, uh, the, the dominance of the Delta variant in the UK. Um, the work from Warwick and also Bristol has been pivotal in the roadmaps to relaxation in the UK, as well as the vaccine rollout. Um, which again Warwick led on and um, uh, Julia's done some work uh, with other members of the team on uh, risks of vaccine escape. Um, so uh, th they're also currently uh, very busy working on uh, looking at the uh, rise in Omicron in the UK. Uh, so the consortium really aims to be very outward facing. We have research meetings and, and monthly seminars at INI um, and a weekly seminar series. And we also have a collaboration with Plus Magazine. Um, so the consortium is very much about trying to um, bring together the modeling expertise from across the UK and be very outward facing to the wider research community, which is why we're trying to work closely with, uh, with the, the RAMP uh, initiative to try and ensure that um, the, uh, the, the, the 
series of events that they put on is um, helping to bridge the gap between spire modelers and what's useful to the to the to spire modelers and uh, the wider research community um, so if you want to find out more there's our, our website and you can also follow us on twitter and i'll put those links both in the um, chat function uh, and with that i will uh, stop sharing and um, pass over to sam Moore, who has um, is part of the warwick team um, from juniper consortium and um, he will he's the one who's organized this whole event and is been doing all of the work on uh, vaccination so it's a very very great person to organize this event um, so thank you very much I'll pass over to you Sam. Thanks very much Kira. Um, yeah so I was I'll just start sharing my screen too. Almost seamlessly. Um, yeah so, so as Kira said I've been working on vaccination in the UK for um, since a long time now, since before we actually had vaccines here for COVID. Um, so I've been really looking forward to this event as a chance to discuss it more with other people from around the world, in fact. Um, so, yeah, before before we had vaccines in the UK, um, it was a lot of excitement about getting these vaccines because um, we all thought this was going to deliver us straight from this epidemic which we were gripped in um, and stop us having all these lockdown measures and stuff. Um, so we're interested in how this could be best achieved and so we're looking at modeling um like ourselves in warwick to try and work out what best to do with the vaccine when it does come um to lose this reliance on these um non-pharmaceutical measures which have been gripped by and um, these lockdowns um which obviously have detrimental effects on economic and social life um so we wanted to use, the, use vaccines instead to replace our reliance on these measures to reduce hospitalizations and deaths. Um, so the first question really in optimal vaccination is what, what, what do we want to achieve? Is it, is it limiting these deaths and hospitalizations or is it limiting this um, more economic concerns which have become more and more the case as time's moved on? Um, obviously, when vaccines first came around, there was a big limitation in how much vaccine we had to start off with um, and how quickly we could get it out. So working out who should we should give it to was a real, real big problem because um, we wanted to have the best impact as fast as possible. Um, and the questions we looked at were, um, should we give it to the vulnerable people? Uh, that's the people who are most likely to get this disease and most likely to have serious consequences. Like the elderly were much, much more likely to go into hospital, as, we should, as I know you were aware, than um, younger people. So do we target them to try and protect them directly? Um, or, or the other option is you could target the spreaders, those who are going around and having lots of contact with other people um, and try and stop them getting infected and therefore slow the infection down the whole um, so we looked at this in the UK, uh, bearing in mind that vaccinations aren't perfect and they have different efficacies against transmission and um, symptoms, severe disease and mild disease. Um, so it's quite a complicated question. Um, and today I think we're going to have lots of um, some other views on how this can be done and the, the dynamics involving this. Um, so we've been very, been very fortunate in the UK to have an extremely successful vaccination program, um, leading us to a sort of state where we can start looking outwardly a bit more. Um, as there's many countries around the globe that still don't have um, such a wide, a high amount of vaccination, and there's still many vulnerable people unprotected, they need some help to catch up. Um, but and only by reducing global infection can we actually get out of the pandemic state and get transferred to an endemic state um, where the vaccines, uh, where the um, infection's more manageable and slows down a bit and becomes more like a flu and comes in year on year. Um, at the moment, things are growing too fast for that to happen. Um, the problem is we've got highly heterogeneous co global coverage some countries, um, like low-income countries on, as a whole, have le on average less than 2% people fully vaccinated, which is much, much less, obviously, than 
countries like ourselves, which we were, we were pushing, pushing over 98% vaccination coverage in our most, most vulnerable people, which is fantastic. Um, but obviously there's still limitations in how much global vaccine there is out and the quality of this vaccine. Like some, some countries don't have the same quality of vaccine we do, and they've got lower efficacies and that has to be taken into account too. Um, and only by slowing down this the virus, only by getting more wide coverage of vaccination throughout the globe, can we slow down infection and therefore slow down the um, emergence of the new variants which keep causing us all these problems. Um, so we've had the alpha, alpha variant hit us, and then Delta, and now Omicron. Um, and these new variants mean that vaccination isn't working for us perfectly. We, we, we're getting escape and the transmissions over, advantages are overcoming um, the level of protection we already have. So it, only by getting broader coverage of vaccination throughout the globe can we actually stabilize things and get to a, a state which we can control. Um, obviously, there's also pressures of waning immunity and vaccine. And due to variants coming in, there's a temptation to just want to stockpile vaccine, increase dosage within, a, within our own country, um, which creates pressures to hold on to our vaccine. Whereas really, maybe we shouldn't be holding on. Maybe we should be vaccinating elsewhere. And we still got a long way to go to get good global coverage. So we need to work out how to get it right. And I'm hoping that today's discussion um, can discuss about different ways that th this may be done most effectively. Um, and yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it. And thank you. And I'll pass over to Ed now, I think, to share the first session. <clears throat> Great. Thanks, Sam, for that yeah, brilliant introduction. Uh, so yeah, hi, everyone. My name's Ed Hill. So I'm also a postdoc at the University of Warwick. And I'm going to be, as Sam said, yeah, helping chair this first session of today, which is on the theme of targeting vaccinations. And within this, there's three talks or 30 minutes. I think the typical format is 25 minute talk and then about five minutes for questions after each one. And you can submit your questions through either the chat or the Q&A box, or you can raise your hand at the end of the talk. Uh, so with that, our first presenter today is going to